right, so this is chapter six, lesson two, properties of parallelograms. Our learning objective is to use relationships among sides and angles of parallelograms and to use relationships among diagonals of parallelograms. Just to remember, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. In a quadrilateral, opposite sides do not share a vertex, opposite angles do not share a side. So, AB and CD are opposite sides. So, these red sides here are opposites. And angle A and angle C, so they're kind of catty corner to each other, are opposite angles. So, when we look at our theorem, 6, 3, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So, if I were writing this down, I would definitely highlight this part here. A, B, and C, D are congruent, and B, C, and A, D are congruent. That's just the property of parallelograms. So if you look, the um, opposite, in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel. All right, so... Let's use that. Angles that share a side are consecutive angles. They're right next to each other. So in this diagram, angle A and angle B are consecutive angles because they share side AB. So let's look at our theorem. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. So in my notes, I definitely want to include this picture of the parallelogram and then each of these supplementary statements. So A and B, because they're consecutive angles, are supplementary. So angle A and angle B are supplementary. Angle B and angle C are supplementary. Angle C and angle D are supplementary. And angle B and angle A are supplementary. So when we see this in our problems, it, if you look, there's this nice little, it took me a, a minute looking at this picture to figure out that, oh, this was a quadrilateral right here. And what is angle P in quadrilateral P, Q, R, S, if angle S is 64? So we know angle P plus angle S is equal to 180 because consecutive angles are supplementary. So angle P plus 64 is 180. That leaves us with angle P equaling 116. And that is answer C right here. All right, so now let's look at our practice problem. Suppose that you adjust the lamp, so angle S is not 64 anymore, but that it's 86. So what is angle R in the parallelogram PQRS? So we are going to do the same thing as we did above. We're going to say the measure of angle S plus the measure of angle P is equal to 180. Measure of angle S is 86. And then we're going to subtract 86 from both sides. And you get the measure of angle P is uh, 180 minus 80 is 100, and 100 minus 6 is 94 degrees. Alright, that brings us to our next theorem, that opposite sides are congruent. So, um, op sorry, opposite angles are congruent, opposite sides are also congruent, but in this case, opposite angles are congruent. So angle A 
is congruent to angle C and angle D is congruent to angle B. I like this because it looks the way you think it's supposed to look. So let's look at this just based on the information. Let's see what we're given. We're given that we have a parallelogram. So that means these guys are parallel and these guys are parallel. Uh, AK, so this length here, is congruent to MK. So we want to prove that BCD, this angle here, is congruent to CMD. So the first thing that we can do is we can say because I have a parallelogram, angle A is congruent to angle C. Um, since A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, And um, we can say angle A is congruent to angle M since triangle AKM is isosceles. And then, technically, let's look at our technical terms. So, it is given that ABCD and NMLB are parallelograms, so their opposite angles are congruent. Check. That angle B is congruent to angle M, and B is congruent to D. So, by the transitive property of congruence, BCD is congruent to angle C, M, D. Awesome. All right. Next theorem. This one is kind of the, one of the most important ones because it's not evident um, just when we're looking at stuff. So if our quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. So in here, it would mean that AE is congruent to EC, yes. and BE is congruent to DE. So a parallelogram have diagonals that bisect each other. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Find values of X and Y in this parallelogram are so that parallelogram PQRS at the right, what are PR and SQ? So we know that X plus 1, this value here, is equal to Y because the diagonals bisect each other, so it creates two equal portions. We know that 3Y minus Z is equal to 2X. I mean, 3y minus 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in. I'm going to take out y. I'm going to substitute in x plus 1 here. And I'm going to solve, solve, solve. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I get x is equal to 4. So now you have to come back here. It doesn't say, it says find x and y. I found that x is equal to 4. 
and that would mean y is equal to 4 plus 1, which is 5, and then it wants PR and SQ. So PR is 3y minus 7 plus 2x, and SQ is, because I'm just taking the values and adding them together, SQ is x plus 1 plus 1. So if I plug in the values, For each one of these, 4 plus 1 plus 5. Do this one, the bottom one first. I get SQ is equal to 10. It's all the way across here. And this is 15 minus 7 plus 8. So that is 15 minus 7 is 8, and 8 plus 8 is 16. So PR is equal to 16. And that's the answer to my problem. All right. Lastly, but not leastly, we're looking at theorem 6, 7. And this is when we have multiple trapezoids stacked on top of each other. If three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on every transversal. So remember, this is the transversal. We are given that AC is congruent to EC. And then we can say if that's the case, then BD is congruent to DF. So let's look at this sample problem that they give us here. In, figure, in the figure, AE, BF, C, G, and D, H are all parallel to each other. A, B, B, C, and C, D are all equal to 2. And E, F is 2.25. What is E, H? E, H is the segment that goes from here all the way to here. So what they say is E, H is equal to F, G is equal to G, H. They, e, H is all three of those items added together, which is 2.5 added together three times. And that gives us 6.75. We are going to use this figure, but instead... EF, instead of being 2.25, it's going to be 6. Um, and AD is 15. They want to know what is just CD. So I know that AB plus BC plus CD is equal to 15. I know that these guys are all equal to each other, so I'm going to substitute in AB for all of these. So I can say that three ABs are equal to 15. I divide both sides by 3, and I get AB is equal to 5. So therefore, CD must also be equal to 5. And that's the end of section 6-2.